What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrensky here, and have you ever wondered, would Frozen Orb be OP if it had no cooldown? Would it be a viable alternative to Blizzard? Could we actually see other Sorceress builds besides pure Blizzard at the start of every single ladder? Well, I was kind of wondering the same as well. So I have some modified D2R files that has no cooldown on Frozen Orb. So I'm going to do some testing with the budget Sorceress as well as the high-end geared Sorceress. Players 1, Players 7 difficulty. I'm actually going to kind of compare the two and... I personally don't think it would be OP and I think it would be a viable alternative for like players 1 to players 3 farming and give us something else to play besides the Blizzard Sorcerers. So I'm going to cover that testing and then at the end of the video I will sort of do a back and forth rebuttal where I'm going to kind of point out some key kind of points that you guys are going to say about why it would be too OP to have no cooldown on Frozen Orb. I'm going to try and rebuttal those because I kind of want more variety and endgame options for DTR. I just think it's a little bit stale at the moment. Again, patch 2.4 was amazing, but it really only introduced Fist Evans Paladin and Nova Sorcerers as new meta build. So I would like to see some Frozen Orb Sorceresses running through patch 2.5. So again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree, but a quick reminder before we jump in, just want to let you guys know that I do stream twice a week on Twitch. We're often streamed Diablo 2 Resurrected, so if you guys do enjoy this YouTube content, any falls on that platform would be very much appreciated. That being said, guys, let's jump in. So for the first test run, I'm going to run through the Ancient Tunnels on players 1 difficulty with a budget sorcerer. So quickly go over her gear. She's using Spirit and a Crystal Sword, Lore for the Helmet, different FCR Jewelry, Tal's Belt, Mage Fist Gloves, Silk Weave Boots, and Spirit and a Monarch Shield. And the Mercenary is Treachery, Tal's Mask, and Insight, and a Non-Eth Thresher. So again, the gear will be exactly the same for the Frozen Orb counterpart. Now as far as her skill tree, I put 100 point into Warmth. The one point wonders for the lightning tree, and then the cold skill tree, 17 for cold mastery, one into frozen armor, and then I maxed out blizzard, ice blast, ice bolt, and put the remaining points into glacial spike. So this setup is three and a half thousand blizzard damage with 1.7k ice blast damage. So again, I'm just gonna do kind of standard blizzard gameplay, cast blizzard, and then alternate between ice blast. Now I have a little bit squishy gear here for resistances, but I'm anticipating. Well, we all know, like, what this clear speed is going to be like. Everybody plays Blizzard Sorceress at the start of ladder. I'm not really expecting anything new. Again, I'll post edit some clear speed times. We'll see how it, at least on a budget scale, compares to the Blizzard Sorceress. One thing I am anticipating is that the Blizzard aspect of the test is going to be very mana intensive. I can just see no cooldown with, like, 30, you know, mana per... Frozen Orb cast, it's going to be something in the realm of like Nova Sorceress expenditure of mana. It's kind of what I'm predicting. And again, I'm not really trying to set like clear speed speedrun records here. Just trying to get a baseline of a decent clear test. All monsters with Blizzard, and then all monsters with Frozen Orb, budget gear. And I'll run the exact same test with a very, very, very high-end geared variant. And then again, that one will be on higher difficulty settings. Because you can't really, in my opinion, with really good gear, like the Ancient Tunnels, you can't you can't tell a difference between players 1 and players 7 if you have really good gear. Pretty much everything just one shot. So I feel like it's a more appropriate of a test to do the budget stuff on P1. And then player 7 or players 8 for the good stuff. Okay, so I think that's everything. We'll pack in here. Now, I've always loved, like, standard Blizzard Sorceress gameplay. But I just think it would be really cool to just sling frozen orbs and have, like, a fair counterpart to it. I kind of have Blizzard as being your DPS option. And Frozen Orb being kind of like your AoE option. Because right now, just Frozen Orb is your shit option, in my opinion. That's Players 1, Budget, Blizzard Sorceress, in the Ancient Tunnels. So test number 2, the exact same Sorceress, the exact same gear, although I fully spec Frozen Orb for damage. So taking a look at her skill tree, 20 hard points into Frozen Orb, 17 into Cold Mastery, 20 hard points into Ice Bolt. Now I had a lot of extra skill points to invest elsewhere at this point. But again, comparing to the 3.5 Blizzard damage and the 2k, almost 2k ice, ice Blast damage, I have 511 Frozen Orb damage. So this is why I've always advocated for like changing something in Frozen Orb, just because it cannot compete with that high damage output with the synergies of Blizzard. So for the rest of the skills, I put 100 point into Frozen Armor, 1 point wonders for the Lightning Tree, and then 1 into, or excuse me, then I maxed out Warmth. 
So I'll have a lot more mana regen. But again, talking to that mana casting point, 37.5 mana with no cooldown. This is a mana hungry intensive skill. But now we'll do a quick clear speed comparison between the two. Completely different playstyle. So I'm kind of curious what you guys are going to say in the comments. It looks to be on par or slightly faster. There's a cool enemy and guy here. Why the mercenary? But how cool is this? A level 30 skill, Frozen Orb, is useful in any, anything other than a dual spec build. Because that is the only time it is ever used, in my opinion, for some dual Fireball Frozen Orb spec. But wouldn't it be cool to just see Frozen Orbs being slung everywhere? I think the reason why this was removed way back in the day was that it had something to do with an FPS issue with the game running at 25 FPS, but now that we can run like 60 or uncapped frame rates on D2R, I think it's fine. So yeah, I don't think that the... That clearly, again, I'll post that at times, that clearly felt faster, but it didn't feel like OP. I just think it's the nature of the fact that you can like tele point and sling versus casting and, and just waiting for stuff to drop from above like you do with the standard blizzard approach so that is again players one frozen or budget gear so now we'll do the exact same test but high-end gear we'll compare the clear speed so the next test is going to be a players eight difficulty blizzard sorceress run in the ancient tunnels with a high-end gear sorceress so to quickly go over her gear this full top rashes set with two sojs trangs gloves random boots furnace rides it doesn't matter and then have different assorted cold skillers obviously here i did build Torch and Annie, so a lot higher plus skill gear. The mercenaries again, Insight, Fortitude, and Vige, so he's a lot stronger, although he doesn't really have much impact on the test, but I just want to show off his gear quickly. Now the skill tree, a little bit different because I have a lot more extra skill points. One hard point into Cold Mastery, one hard point into Frozen Armor, then a completely maxed out Blizzard, Ice Blast, Ice Bolt, Glacial Spike, and then a completely maxed out Frozen Orb. That's just because that provides more damage to Ice Blast. So I have a 9,000k Blizzard, with six and a half K ice blast. So substantial more, or substantially more damage than the first test, obviously. And again, just one point wonders and warmth. Same thing again, not trying to set uh, their speed run records, but players eight difficulty, still shattering stuff. But we'll compare it and see if frozen orb can compete with the damage. Does it seem like on the lower difficulty settings? Oh, I should buff up with CTA too. It's an extra skill point. So it should get us even higher than 9k uh, Blizzard damage. So yeah, not anything new. I'm sure you guys have seen thousands of Blizzard Sorceress runs between yourself or watching other streamers gear up. It is the way... It's the level 85 area to farm on a Sorceress. Well, maybe the Stony Tombs and Arachnid's Lair has kind of changed that in patch 2.5. Again, you can kind of just see everything's everything's shattering. Like my gut tells me again, I'm gonna post that at times here, but it seems like with no cooldown on Frozen Orb, that Frozen Orb seems like it's faster on the lower difficulty settings, but higher difficulty settings, kind of like we're changing, we're making Frozen Orb our AOE skill instead of our shit skill because no one ever uses it, and then we're still keeping Blizzard as kind of like your high DPS kind of option. Which is kind of like what I think it'd be a good comparison between the Fist Evans Paladin, to be honest. Fist Evans Paladin and Hammerden. Hammerden was your still your DPS option, but for AOE, definitely Fist Evans on lower difficulty settings was better. 
But again, that's players eight. Pretty solid run with a 9,000k Blizzard and a 6,500k Ice Blast. So for the final test, I have the same gear as the high-end Blizzard Sorcerer's variant, although I spec'd it obviously for pure Frozen Orb damage. Now I had a ton of extra skill points because 20 hard points into Frozen Orb, 20 hard points into Ice Bolt, and then one hard point into Gold Mastery. I didn't need anything more than that, so I had a ton of extra skill points. So you can see the damage is about a thousand per shard. So obviously significantly less damage than the 9,000 Blizzard and the six and a half K Ice Bolt damage. So that's where I kind of really think that even though you have AOE. No cooldown would not be OP because you're just comparing damage numbers. There's just literally no comparison. Again, this is a player's eight difficulty test. Lightning skill tree, but one appointed TK, teleport, completely max out static field. Although I'm not really going to use it for this test. Although I think it would cater very well to like farming Chaos Sanctuary, just having a massive static field range. And then it completely maxed out warmth. So again, I'm going to throw up the timer. We're not trying to set speed runs, but we'll see if there's any significant clear speed between this and a high end blue sorceress. Doesn't seem OP to me at all. Now this isn't a Death Fathom test, but I do want to point out that Full Tile Ratchet set does give me plus 15% cool damage. So I'm obviously leaving some damage on the table compared to like, you know, Fathom and maybe like a plus 15 damage Ormus Robes. Even though Ormus doesn't spawn Frozen Orb, you could still get more damage there. Obviously fast at Nightwings. But I remember proposing making this change way back when they first announced patch 2.4 and so many people blasted me in the comments saying it was OP. This in no way seems OP to me at all. If anything on these higher difficulty settings I think you could actually get away with even maybe a slightly increased frozen orb damage buff. Now I am going to talk about nightmare leveling and a couple other aspects after the test here. Yeah, I just think it shows it's sort of similar to the Fist Davin's Paladin compared to the Hammerdin. Like, a no cooldown Frozen Orb would be really cool for low difficulty settings. A really fun build, I mean, looks really cool, but full skillers, Torch and Annie, full towel set. Doesn't seem like it can really. I mean, it has great AoE, it just can't really compete with the, the raw damage of Blizzard. Looks really cool though. Yeah, and, and just in my in my eyes, again, we'll post edit, we'll see times and comparisons, but removing the cooldown, I think, would just make it a viable option and not make it OP at all. So that in a nutshell wraps up my different testing for Frozen Orb versus Blizzard. Again, I didn't test multiple gear options. I didn't test doing runs in Chaos Sanctuary, Bale runs, etc. Because that would make for like a 45 minute long video or like just tons of back end testing and compressing. But I genuinely think that at lower scaled difficulties, no cooldown Frozen Orb would be fine. And I think that it just really can't compete with the high end difficulty setting and just the broad damage you get from Blues. So I think at bare minimum, Having no cooldown on Frozen Orb would be completely fine because I know a lot of people lambasted me in a previous video that I made where I made kind of suggestions to tweak the Sorceress and a lot of people thought it would be way too stupid OP to have no cooldown and I think that this video at the very least kind of demonstrated that it wouldn't be OP, it would just be a viable option. Now I do want to talk about three specific key criticisms or points that I'm sure will be brought up and I want to try and address them. The first is well, if you were to remove the cooldown on Frozen Orb, wouldn't that make a Blizzard slash Frozen Orb combo OP? Because you could just spam Blizzard once and then alternate by firing off a ton of Frozen Orbs and then again repeat the process. Now, I don't think this would make Blizzard Sorcerers OP. I think that it would maybe give a Blizzard Sorcerers a little bit better AoE on low difficulty settings. But if you were to completely max out Blizzard's synergies, you're only going to have about 500 frozen orb damage with a really good geared character. So what do you think would be better? A 9,000 Blizzard with you know 500 orb shards for extra AoE or 9,000 Blizzard 
with six and a half thousand ice blast damage. And again, each single ice blast is doing six and a half K damage. So insane single target damage versus an obvious DPS drop for more AOE. If anything, I think in my opinion, it maybe provides a Blizzard Sorceress with a different optional playstyle. It wouldn't necessarily be stronger, but would have better area of effect damage. Now, the second point that I want to make that I know some people are going to say, well, hey, no cooldown on Frozen Orb would make Nightmare leveling super OP. And it absolutely would. I am not denying it. There's no way in hell that I can deny that it would not make Nightmare leveling easier. But I want to kind of stress the point that if you're going to say spend, depending on how long you want to grind the end game, you're going to spend maybe 5% of your playtime in normal, 5% of your playtime in Nightmare, and then 90% in Hell difficulty. Now, again, that's if you just get to Hell Bail and you quit. Obviously, those numbers will be skewed a little bit, but I'm just assuming standard player kind of playing through ladder until they lose interest. It's going to be about 5% normal, 5% nightmare, and then 90% it's going to be all hell grinding. So I think that it makes more sense to not worry so much about maybe making nightmare a little bit easier and focus on different viable hell options. I've always taken that stance. Again, feel free to disagree in the comment section below, but that's the hill that I'm going to die on. And then the final point that I want to bring up is that will it make dual spec builds too OP? I don't think that it will. If anything, I think that it would maybe provide extra versatility. So if you had no cooldown on Frozen Orb and then had like a really strong fireball and good gear, say like Infinity Sorceress or sorry, Infinity Mercenary, I think that that would provide a really good option instead of either making the jump from Blizzard and focusing on areas where there's no cold immune and then jumping to a Lightning Sorceress. Because let's be honest, there is very few Blizz Ballers or Frozen Orb Media Sorceress builds it's mostly a single player thing just to get through the game. Most people on Battle.net either they, like they focus on their Blizzard Sorceress, get geared up and then make the switch to like Lightning or Nova or they make the jump to a Hammer and they don't really there's not a ton of dual spec builds but I do think that obviously no cooldown of Frozen Orb and then slamming like a strong fireball in between that would be a very fun and easy to play build and would be very strong. So I think if anything you would see more end game Sorceress builds be slamming frozen orb and fireball versus everyone making the jump from blizzard to lightning or nova or, you know hammered and etc so that's kind of the three sort of common criticism feedbacks that i'm expecting to receive in the bottom of this video again guys feel free to let me know exactly what you think in the comment section below don't hold back if you think that i'm entirely wrong you think i'm introducing power creep into the game but i really think they need to grab the inhale and anthill excuse me and shake the living shit out of it to provide some new meta and options i really think that we only got fist heavens and nova in past 2.4 and i think that what i showed frozen orb would not be op it would just give you a different option to play with other than blizzard but again let me know in the comment section below any feedback is valued as long as you're not a dick besides that if you could throw a like on the video that'd be awesome i'll catch you guys on my next video or live stream peace out